What is up, folks? Welcome back to the channel. As always, thank you for clicking on this so much. Allow me to use my outdoor experiences to a bad right here. Now, today, we are back in the carport, as you guys can tell. Got this sucker nice and cleaned up. Nice and clean, nice and clean. It was a little dirty the last time. We got some stuff out of here, got rid of some stuff, sold some stuff. And we got space for the boat and space to work on the boat. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today here, folks. We're finally gonna work on the Jumbo. This is gonna be a multi-video series, doing a lot of stuff on the Jumbo. I'm not gonna be able to get it all in one, so I figured I'd break it up into a couple parts. Starting off with storage. We are gonna get some storage in this bad boy, not only because it is convenient and it is needed, but it is gonna allow space for future stuff with electrical wiring, with switches, with uh, batteries, and it kind of opens up these slots to hide stuff. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Not a whole lot, shouldn't be too hard. I got two hatches here. We're gonna get them open, see where they fit exactly. I had a plan, but now that I kind of see the box on one, I think it's a little thinner than I want to thought. So we're gonna see how it fits. Uh, and yeah, bring you guys along. Hopefully this stuff kind of helps you guys. And like I said, this is gonna be a multi-video uh, series. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, working on your own John boat, working on your boat, hit that subscribe button, man. I got a bunch more stuff coming. I got spark plugs, oil, I got gear lube, and an impeller kit for this bad boy. That's probably gonna be next on the next on the list. I've had a trolling motor forever, just been sitting in the garage. I've got the trolling motor, I've got a switch bank, I've got all the electrical wiring needed. There's some wire. So I've got it all. I'm just not gonna be able to do it all in once and definitely not in one boring long video. So we're gonna start off with storage. Everything that I use will be linked in the, in the description below. If you guys have any questions, please hit me up in the comments. If you take the time to write it, I will take the time to read it. So on that note, let's get this fan cranking. I'm gonna probably take the motor off, get everything situated, and let's get started. I made this bad boy up the other night. Save my transom. Not bad, huh? All right, so these are the hatches from Seaflow, all from Amazon. Decent in price, they look like good quality, had good reviews, and what the heck. I got them in black to kind of match the boat and the trailer. Seeing these, I kind of regret not getting lockable ones, but whatever. So There's one hatch, it's just the hatch. That's the size hole you're gonna cut, you're gonna want to cut. That's that one, this one. So I got 24 by nine and a half, and this one is 14 and three quarters by 10.6 inches. My original intention was to have this one back here, the 24 inches, but I, I thought it was just a little bit wider. I don't know if that space is gonna allow for a battery to fit, and I really need to put a battery in here. So, I think we're gonna put this one up front. It fits perfectly up there. And then I'm gonna have this hatch, just a single hatch, maybe in the future get another one, but just single hatch it up right here. I'm gonna line it up with this line here as best as I can. That way I don't have anything rested on, resting on this slant. Maybe go in a little bit more to have all this free space. And that's what it's gonna look like. Real simple, I wish this would come with a template, but it's not that hard. You can line it all up just like that without an issue. My only fear is what is inside of here. I know it's filled with foam. I don't feel rivets here. That's one thing, if you guys see rivets all along this face or on the back face, that means there's some sort of bracing or something down there. So be mindful of that when you're placing this. Now this is the one in the back. The one in the front, it's gonna be this one. And it happens a bit actually perfectly, so let's check that out. Now here in the front, I got this long one. Again, intentionally I got it for the back of the boat, but it fits beautifully right here. So that's gonna go there. I'm just gonna mark my outline, get it positioned perfectly where I want it. We're just gonna cut it, pop it in, a couple cell tappers, and that's it. All right, so we got that one that's gonna go there. It takes almost over the whole step, which looks great. And then we've got this one back here, the smaller one that's gonna go here, still leaving me space to sit down. If I ever wanna put a seat there, I can. Now, another main reason for this is not just storage. I need to be able to fit a battery in here, fit my battery disconnect, fit my fuse block, fit my switch bank, and get all the wires ran to that stuff. So that is why I need some space inside of there. Same thing for the front. I'm gonna put my trolling motor here so I need to be able to get to some connections in here as well as for my fish finder. I'm gonna have a fish finder up here. So this allows me to fish these wires through here and not have to have any extra holes that I don't need. It's kind of a cover for a hole to be able to fish wires with the secondary uh, convenience of being storage. So let me show you guys what tools I'm working with. It's not a whole lot. You may not have some, like I said, you cut this metal with a lot of stuff. I'm just gonna show you guys what I'm using. I think it makes it the easiest, but your tools, your choice, just be safe. 
Now, as far as tools and gear is concerned, it's not too complicated. I'm gonna use a side grinder to cut this. The only thing I will say about a side grinder is that this sucker is heavy duty. It'll pull you, you can really get hurt on it. So if you don't have experience with it, maybe try using a jigsaw or a Dremel or something else. This will get through it like butter and really quick. Uh, I just have a metal blade. Anytime you're using this bad boy, please use these. I don't care how much of a manly man you are, but any piece of metal gets in your eyes, you're screwed. That is gonna cut our holes. Obviously mark it with a pencil. You don't wanna mark with a pen or a sharp or anything that's gonna leave a mark on here. I'm not gonna paint this bad boy, so this can easily rub off. This tape and paper, you can use newspaper, anything really. It's just to protect around where you're cutting. As you're cutting, sparks are gonna fly. This tape and this paper kind of help the cleaning process. You get black char marks from all the burning. Um, that's hard to come off sometimes. This just makes it a lot easier to clean up. I got a level here just to make our line straight, even though I think I'm just gonna trace that just in case. Same thing with the square, just to make sure we're nice and flush with everything. I've got these flat style screws. Now the key thing is that they're flat style. They have this little taper here that allows them to sit perfectly flat when you have this indention there, see? If you use a pen head, oval head, circle head, anything like that, it's not gonna work and then you're hatch isn't gonna close correctly. So make sure you get these flat style screws. I'm probably gonna go and pick up slightly bigger ones so they fit in there just a little bit better. Also, I don't have a whole lot of them. And then they're gonna be self tappers. That way they drill through here. The hatches themselves, obviously. I've got this two and one eighths hole saw that I'm gonna use to get these corners. Now it looks like these corners are perfectly rounded with this two and one eighths bit. I don't know if you guys can tell, it's kind of hard to do with that drill bit in there, but I'm gonna try to hit the corners and then cut the straights with the, uh, with an angle drill. So this gives me those nice rounded corners without having to keep a heady, steady hand. That's gonna help out a lot. Any kind of impact or just screw drill to get these screws in there. And then of course, anytime we're doing anything outdoors, guys, get your H2O. Okay, that looks good for me. folks we're ready to cut for our cut I want to mark where this is gonna go I'm my eyeball in here and push in and then same thing here Ugh. Ah. Ooh. This is going to 
gonna make the biggest mess in the world. And while doing this, be mindful of these really jagged edges. Unless you follow them, they're gonna be real sharp. Definitely not the funnest part of the thing. Ow! I guess let's see if the damn hat fits. Negative. Knew it. Freaking knew it. By far, the hardest part is this thing right here. So now I'm trying to figure out how much of this stuff I'm going to actually move. I've got maybe three inches in. I guess I'll try to get to about right here. There should be enough storage for what I need. Now the only thing, it's got another piece of insulation, like a board insulation, that would be good. I just don't know if it's going to give me enough clearance. I'm just going to have to see. So we're going to keep getting after this styrofoam. Pull out the shop back and clean up this mess. Alright, got some clearance here now, boss. Now, this is how this looks inside. As you guys can see, there's another piece of styrofoam how at least three to four inches thick. It's a good platform to kind of keep your stuff dry. That's how deep I got in. I might go in a little bit more, but I don't know. So that's a good thing to keep yourself dry. I just don't know if this clearance here, which is what, not even six inches? It's gonna clear a battery. That's my main concern. So what I'm gonna end up doing probably is removing this. I wish it was a little thinner than that, maybe a two inch sheet. All right, as you guys can see, I was able to take this freaking three inch, four inch board. That was the base of that insulation. And now I've got plenty of clearance for my battery. Um, I'm not gonna dig it all the way in there. What I'm gonna probably end up doing is putting a little piece of board here to make a wall and then a reinforcement for the floor a subfloor and then a floor so make sure everything stays dry she's coming along pretty good i'm gonna leave this alone before i give it a good clean and go start on the other one all right here is the second one and i learned my lesson from the first one do not mark the inside mark the outside this one we're going to take all the insulation out and i'm just kind of eyeballing these bad boys chunks man and just freaking start pulling it out you'll clean it all in the shop back in there that was much easier than the other one should be good beautifully beautiful all right guys there you have it. about an hour in maybe an hour and a half and we've already got our holes cut out this one came out exceptionally nice got a little boo-boo there got a little too far not a whole lot of space again. This one was mainly to get some wires through here, but I will use this as some sort of storage. I'm not sure what I've got going on in here just yet. So the back one is offset to the right. And here's this bad boy. I've cleared out maybe, I don't know, a foot, a foot and a half from here to the where the styrofoam starts. 
and we'll probably end up putting a board here. I didn't want to go in too deep removing insulation because I do, I'm gonna sit here. I'm a big boy. I need some sort of reinforcement. I don't want to have to start bracing stuff. So that's where I'm gonna cut it. I really, all I needed here is a battery and then a bunch of switches going on the wall here. So I don't need a whole lot of space. I just need to make sure I get it weatherproof. So I'm gonna put some sort of pieces of subfloor to raise it and then a floor. I'm thinking about just pink styrofoam. I'm not sure, let me see what I got. But uh, that's what she's looking like, guys. I got some of this insulation, one inch, and just kind of like a sheathing insulation. I went ahead and lined out the inside of that bad boy. Nothing to it. Obviously, I just measured the square cut it and then cut it in half so that it could fit through this hole same thing with that back side measure the width and then the height cut it and then cut it in half so that i can fit in through here and came up with four little pieces here i think i'm just gonna use some liquid nails to get this down put some weight on it and then probably paint the whole thing black or maybe throw some carpet on there i got some carpet we'll see what fits like all things in here i will link everything uh, in the description below i started off with some tools kept adding to it so as of now we've added this big old right angle uh for sheetrock just to mark straight lines box cutter measuring tape vacuum didn't have that out earlier I mean, I think that's it, so. All right, folks, change of plans. I got a little half-inch piece of plywood that I was treated with some waterproofing, quote-unquote. And I'm going to put it down. As you can see, I marked there where not to put glue. I'm not going to put glue here, so I'm going to put glue all right here. That way, it raises up this, just giving it a little bit more resistance from that water. Making some progress here. We've got the plywood underneath that with those two, everything liquid nails down. It's on there pretty tight, not moving. But before I put that carpet in, I want to spray everything black so it kind of looks, kind of hides all the blemishes. So I just got some cheap old paint. Let's get to spraying. All righty, guys, we are getting there. So I've got it all painted up in there. There's two pieces in there holding it up. There's two pieces in there on there. There's a piece of plywood beneath that just to kind of give it a subfloor to raise it. And last thing to do is just literally just glue a piece of carpet over there. We're trying to flatten it out over here. I'm gonna just put a bunch of liquid nails on there, press it down with some weights and leave it alone. After that, that'll be it. We just got to screw the top on there. I got to go to Home Depot to get some screws. And that's gonna be it. This front one I'm gonna leave for wet storage, quote unquote, not necessarily wet, but anchor, you know, stuff stuff like that that can get wet in here. It's not much space to do in here. A big reason of this hatch was again, just to get some wires over here to the future trolling motor. The hatch just kind of added convenience and um, we should be done. So I'm not gonna do much on the front. I'm gonna run to Home Depot, get some screws for that and wrap this bad boy up and show you guys the final product. Alrighty gang. Got our self tap screws. Let's finish this. Freaking bad boy. What are you doing, bad boy? What are you doing? What are you doing? All right, guys, so this is what we're working with. I put some carpet in here. That was just to weight it down. I hope it's stuck. So this is what we got, guys. Got a little carpet down. Got a little glue on the sides. I can clean that up and a little glue here that I can clean up. But the carpet is down and it's on there nice and tight. So I got carpet here, foam insulation underneath it, a piece of plywood underneath that. And then on here, we just got some foam insulation kind of glued on there. I just liquid nails it all up. That's all done. I got my self tap screws. Let's get this thing in there. All right, guys, so everything after this is pretty simple. Set this sucker down like so, and then get your screws and drill them in. Man, that's nice. Lock it, pull it up, turn your switches on and off. That's all we need. We're done here, guys. That's a wrap. So let's get the other side done. Alrighty, folks.
folks, that is gonna do it for this video. Wasn't too bad, man. Those hatches are looking noise. Wasn't as bad as the install as I thought. I've been dreading it a little bit. I don't know why, because it was super easy. Got a little messed up on the cutting on the first one, but the second one was cake. Got the measurements right, cut it on the first try, and it was done. This is the rear one here, as you guys can see. I'm gonna hold all the electronics now that I've got it bolted down. And I got some carpet down there. I need a vacuum, painted it nice and black. Went a little bit much with the spray paint. And yeah, she's looking good. Close that up. And then the here's the front hatch. Nice, 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 nice. Nice and long. You can access anything in here. Like I said, this is probably going to be my wet storage. I didn't really waterproof it much, but uh, anchor, you know, life jacket, stuff like that. Essentials in the boat. That's going to be in here. Shout out to Seaflow. Good stuff. These are, these are pretty tough. So I am satisfied with this install. Very happy. I appreciate you guys watching. We still have a lot of work to do on this boat. So if you like this kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button, guys. I'm going to put some sort of liner on the seats. Probably not the floor, just the seats because they get super hot. And mainly the electric. I've got a fish finder. I've got a trolling motor. I've got lights. I've got a bulge pump. I've got a lot of electrical to put in here. So you guys are not going to want to miss that. And of course, Merck is sitting there, you know, ran beautifully yesterday when we were running around Texas at a couple lakes but I still want to do a tune-up on this bad boy. I've got the spark plug, oil change, gear lube change, and then of course the uh, impeller to change as well. So, and of course we're gonna keep doing some hunt and some dangling. So you guys are gonna to want to hit that subscribe button. If you guys like these kinds of videos, hit the thumbs up. And on that note, I bid you guys a farewell and I can't wait to see you guys next time. What's up, man?